Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm reviewing Ninjago set number 70677, The Land Bounty. With 1,178 pieces, it is the largest set from the Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitzu Wave of Summer 2019, and it retailed for $130 when it released last year. Here's the Wu minifigure of this set. I believe he is exclusive, and I really like this design with the dark tan hat and the cloth cape. The beard piece, the staff, and the teacup are all accessories that he's had before, and those pieces have remained unchanged since the start of Ninjago. But just taking a quick glance around the back, the other thing that's really awesome with this figure is that he gets printing at the back of his head showing his ponytail. So I really like that, and now let's just remove all the accessories. So with all of those removed, you can get a much better look at his torso and face print, and then around the back, his back printing and the back of his hair. Now, the one thing I have to say is I really dislike this cape because it com comes with only one like neck hole, so it never lays flat because it's made of the new flowier material. Here's Kai. I do like this outfit. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I already took a look at him in my Cole's Dirt Bike review, and all of these guys are pretty much the same. There's only so many different outfits you can give for the ninja. I do like the head wrap piece, though. They also use that in Legacy, and you can see that he does have a gunmetal gray scabbard holding a sword, which all of the ninja have in this set, except for Cole. And with everything removed, you can get a better look at his face, which returns from the Lego Ninjago movie, as well as the reverse with the back printing, which is fairly nice. Next up is Nia. She's definitely my favorite in this set and one of my favorite ninja overall because she really has a great color scheme, especially in recent years as they've gone more towards the gunmetal gray base color rather than dark red. And so this minifigure is head to toe gunmetal gray and she looks really awesome. I love the dark azure color used as her highlight. You can see the scabbard just like blends right into her shoulder because of that color. And this is just a really awesome figure. Like I said, I really love her. So spinning it around the back, you can start to see some of that printing underneath. And with the scabbard removed, there is her back printing as well as her alternate face. And there's her main face, again from the Lego Ninjago movie. Here's Jay. Now I really like that kind of vest printing that he has going on with his outfit. But I don't like the dark blue legs because I think it just really clashes. Since like Nia and Kai and Cole are all just one base color. I think it looks kind of odd to have dark blue legs instead of plain blue legs, but that's like a minor thing. It's just a little bit odd to me. Like, it's just too much of the accent color. There is his back printing and alternate face, as well as his face on the front, which is, again, from the Lego Ninjago movie. So the Cole in this set is actually exclusive as well. This is Cole FS, FS standing for Forbidden Spinjitzu. Now, I really love these figures. This was a new head mold that they introduced, back in 2019 for these figures, and it's dual molded with transparent plastic and solid plastic. So you can see the light really shines through there amazingly. I love that color. You know, he's using trans orange and like trans black, and it looks incredible. I really, really love that piece. It's just an amazing piece. And so again, this is exclusive because they did make Spinjitzu Slam variants of some characters, not Cole, but those were different to just like the FS versions found in sets. But like honestly, the dual molded pieces for like this 2019 for this 2019 Ninjago wave are like absolutely insane in the best way. With that removed, you can see his face, which again is from the Lego Ninjago movie, like everyone else. And Cole also comes with this awesome new Spinjitzu Tornado piece, which is not the same as the ones that they made for Legacy. Again, dual molded, gunmetal gray, and like glitter trans orange. Inside, you can just see Cole. Just stand him up right there, and then you can try spinning it. You can try grabbing him by the head. That works better. I'm, I'm used to spinning it the old way with your fingers. Here is a Pyro Slayer. Now, I don't really know anything about the backstories of these villain characters, but I absolutely love the copper-colored weapons, and this headpiece is, again, just a master, like, exercise in dual molding. You can see that the light comes through, like, that Cobra frill, and it even comes through the eyes if you look like carefully enough. It's kind of harder to see on this one, but you can really see it at the back with that frill. And it looks like it's kind of like a mummified and on fire with the printing. So not sure what that's about again, because I haven't seen the show. And with the weapons removed, that gives a better look at the front torso printing. And again, I'll just show you how this head works. If you just pull it off, it just goes straight over the neck. And you can see that it is dual molded because there is that trans orange plastic shining down there. And it's even present in the mouth as well. 
Here is Esfira. I'm assuming that this character is a general of some sort. You can see that they are holding like this new spear that is supposed to be like trans orange at the top and copper throughout. Doesn't come up very well, but they are holding like some banner that I think is supposed to be one of the banners of like Forbidden Spinjitzu. Again, I don't really know. Scroll maybe. It really looks a lot more like a banner than a scroll, but it is a cool piece. Although this minifigure is just like incredible to me with the pearl gold. That is a new armor piece. They're using that like ghost bottom piece from like the collectible minifigure series. And it's the same kind of head design as the Pyro Slayer, but again in that pearl gold, which is just an awesome color paired with this orange. Here's a quick look at the figure without that banner. So again, that you can just see the armor in more detail. And here's the figure with the armor removed so that you can see the torso printing. That's again, great detail. Around the back, even more great detail. And here's the armor piece. So it has a little like triangular shaped hole for like the front of the snake head to slot into. There are snake heads on the side and there's a stud on the back for attachments. Here's Char. I believe he's supposed to be the leader of the snakes. Again, not 100% sure, although that snake staff is pretty cool. I'm just going to go ahead and remove it right now, though. And again, that is also a new head mold, basically the same as the last, except with a closed mouth and without those frills. And that's incredible as well. I think that that's even more striking than the last piece. With that black and with the trans orange going straight through it, it's an incredible look. Char was using the exact same armor piece as Asphira, and underneath you can see more of the printing, and this is the same exact snake tail piece from like the Rise of the Snakes line in 2012, which is really awesome. I love that LEGO still uses that piece because it is an incredible like leg piece, and I'm glad that it hasn't fallen out of use in the last few years. So there are no side builds in this set, you only get the land bounty. What I'm going to do first to show you guys the main play features because it's going to happen as I move this thing around anyway and then we'll go around the outside. So the biggest play feature is that as you push this thing along those little shurikens on the side will spin. That's really great because like it'll just slice up the enemies as you drive along and I think it's a really great feature. Now the other main one is that there's this little exhaust pipe back here and that will turn the wheels as you drive this thing around. So it does have a very wide turning radius, but again, that's an incredible thing for such a large vehicle and for something that's not like a huge Technic set. I'm really impressed by that turning feature. So first let's take a look around the outside of this vehicle. So it's got the two sails, keeping with the aesthetic of the Destiny's Bounty, even though this one is on land. I love the dragon motif across them as usual. All of the decorations that you see here are stickers. There are a lot of stickers, but I mean, Again, they add so much detail. I especially love those little dragon ones. I love the little like lamps with tassels hanging off the sides. There's this ornate piece made for the Lego Ninjago movie as windows. You've got an entrance into there, which again, we'll take a look at when we get closer inside. Up on the deck, there's a little bonsai tree, which I think is really, really adorable. I love little details like that in Lego sets. Around the front, you can see into the cockpit, there are headlights, and then you can start to see the chairs, but again, we will actually go inside there. And then, just trying to lift this up. The other little details that I appreciate are stuff like just those little ladders to get on, and then there are stairs to go up, you know? Just places to position minifigures, which is really what you want in such a large set that's made as a base for minifigures. And then back here, this is the part that you rotate to steer the entire thing. And now we'll start taking a look at some of the other play features. So first off, up on deck, you've got this rotating cannon. Now this is a normal like Lego pirate cannon where all you have to do is pull back on this little plunger and then it'll fire off these one by one round cylinders. And there are daggers on the side for decoration. They do provide two extra cylinders, which is really good because it's quite easy to lose these. The other deck feature that I really appreciate is that it includes little clips, these little red clips to store weapons. You can see back there, there's already a sword being stored. And so I really like it when LEGO gives spots to store weapons when they're not in use. And speaking of weapons, you do have a little weapon rack down here, which is made with pieces from one of just these golden weapon accessory packs for Ninjago. Returning to the back, there is one more play feature. If you fold down these little triangular flaps, you can start to see that this little ATV can just roll out from in front of there. And then you can actually position a minifigure on here. 
it's big enough and it's a really great little build. Again, that's another piece from the weapons accessory pack. There's another clip to hold another weapon. Minifigures can grab onto the handle up here. And the entire thing has like a little bit of a forward rake when it's on the ground. And so I think that that's a really great look because Lego makes so many ATVs, but this one is still like a little bit new and innovative. There's the gap left by the ATV. If you don't want to store it there, you can put like figures or something. There is enough space, although most of it is tiled. And then to put it back, it's really simple. All you have to do is slide it into place and then it kind of just locks in with those flaps. Looking at the upper section, you can see that there is a ship's wheel up here. So you can position a minifigure right down in there since Abu's not sticking in exactly perfectly because he's holding his cup. But the other big play feature of this set, which I really, really love, angle this down a little bit. If you, if you grab onto these gray pieces back here, it's a little bit stiff, but those engines will pop out. And then this entire part lifts up as a separate flying vehicle. So here's the flying vehicle. I really love this thing. I love it when Ninjago does two-in-one detachable vehicles. And when it's got a function as great as that with, with, you, with you just pulling up those Technic pieces and using them to deploy the engines, that works very well. It's a little bit stiff right now. Now, you do have a little cockpit up front using the same piece as the one on the main ship. And then over here, that's the ship's wheel like I was talking about with a printed piece, actually, not a sticker. And so you can position Wu right up there, like grabbing onto the ship's wheel. But you can also open up these flaps to get to the interior, which we'll do in just a second. But before we do, I do want to mention that you do have stud shooters. And again, they just work as normal stud shooters do. And now I've lost that forever. So to get inside, like I said, you just lift up these flaps. Got to be careful if you got a minifigure standing at the wheel. But if you lift those up, you can see that there is quite a spacious interior. So you can fit two minifigures seated in here. That's another printed piece up there. And then on top of that, you can also fit one at the wheel. So those are classic space seats. So they do give a little bit of room for backpacks and stuff. So the figures will fit with their scabbards on, but obviously not with the swords inside them. And another thing I want to point out is I really love those little windows on the side. It's just a nice detail. They could have just been solid walls, but I think those windows really add a little something. And then once you close up the roof and put Sensei Wu at the wheel, you've got a great little flyer that seats three figures, which I think is really awesome considering you still have an entire gigantic vehicle to put other figures in. So with the flyer removed, you can start accessing the interior space. Now, a minifigure can't actually fit through that hole, which is kind of a shame. It's mostly just for looks, but I still appreciate the opening being there. And again, with that flyer gone, you can pull out this turret and that can rotate 360 degrees, as well as angle up and down a little bit, more so down, not as much up. But that's a really great feature because these are those newer spring-loaded missiles from 2014 that fire off very powerfully. So that's a great addition because they could have just left this empty. I would have been fine with them leaving it empty, but it's nice of LEGO to actually fill it with a play feature. It's a little bit difficult to get access to the rest of the interior. You have to lift up this deck section, although the sail doesn't come off, so getting your fingers in there can be a little bit difficult. All right, so I'll tilt this thing on the side to show you guys the interior. First off, you've got two more seats with a lever in between them. You've got another printed console and a steering wheel. Up front, you've got a sticker. That's great. I really love more details in cockpits like that. Then you have a little training section. So you've got more weapons on the walls, again, from those accessory packs. And then if I spin it around, you can see even more weapons and a little teapot for Sensei Wu, which I think is really cute. And then the last thing on that wall is this little arcade cabinet, which I really love when LEGO slips like little arcade cabinets like that into sets because they're really great. And I love the color for that one with the medium azure. Here are the extra pieces for this set. There's a great selection of extra weapons, including that one for the Pyro Slayer. But what's even better is getting all three of the scrolls of Spinjitsu in one set, because LEGO includes this sheet anytime you get one of them, which makes it really easy to collect all three since they never come apart. So I actually don't have the box for this set because I bought it from eBay and the box was like horribly mangled. So I just threw it out. I didn't want to show it in the review, but this is the same image as on the front of the box. And then at the very back of the instruction manual, there's a couple of different things that you can look at. So at the very end of the instructions, it shows you just kind of like those box images of, you know, what you can do with the play features. 
Then there's a Lego Life ad. I really like this. This is like stylized artwork for this season. That looks beautiful. I'd love to get that as a poster. And then you also have advertisements for the fire and ice sides of the sets. So that's fire. That's the ice theme. And so those are really cute as well. I really like that. And this entire like wave honestly was a really cool concept. So overall, I think that this is a fantastic Ninjago set. Honestly, much better than I would have expected based on the initial reveal, like in early 2019. And I really like it, you know. Um, Lego hasn't done a lot of Destiny's bounties, like proper Destiny's bounties. They've done, they've done a couple over the years. And this just has so much more to do than a regular Destiny's bounty set would. And I know it's because it's a different vehicle, but there are just so many play features. There's the detachable vehicle, there's the turrets, there's the stud shooters. You've got full interiors in multiple areas. You've got a deployable ATV. You've got weapons all over the place. There's even an arcade machine inside. I really love this set. You can definitely tell how much care the designers put in because little details like that bonsai tree on the deck and the arcade machine are not necessary at all to have fun playing with this set, but they just give it an extra touch of life that I really, really like. So again, I think that this is fantastic. $130 is expensive, definitely. And honestly, I, it would have been nicer to see it at 120 given the piece count. But I mean, you also have those huge tires with like those new decorative pieces that I didn't really talk about. So I understand why the price per piece ratio isn't like perfect at that 10 cents range. But I think that it's a pretty decent set. I got this for like $90 on eBay and I'm very happy with that price. But again, even retail price doesn't really seem that bad to me. So that's it for this review. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.